Here we are, Cafe Rubio. Once again, and thank you for showing up on our podcast. I'm so excited for today's show. We have three amazing men. Right, Don? Who yes. Are they? Oh, my Tell goodness. Me. So we have Marcos Crespo, we have Ruben Diaz Jr., and we have Councilman Francisco Moya. I mean, they are just the, the, the trio of them. Wait. Wait until you guys, you're in store for such a great show, really. They're going to be dropping some amazing gems. And the fact that we could do it here at Cafe Rubio is just phenomenal. We love being on location. Um, we're so excited for Boss It Up Media, for being out of the studio. We love Latino Mix for giving us the opportunity to come here, come to you live, um, and just put on the whole production here. Like, shout out to Latino Mix for their production all the time. We can't say it enough. We're always going to give them props because they really do an excellent job. So we're so excited for this episode. Um, I'm Dawn Acevedo, as you guys know, Lisa Garcia. Please make sure to follow us at Boss It Up Media on IG. And um, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, you're in store for a show. Great show. So see you soon. Dilo Duro. Dilo Duro. Hoy no hay quien te despegue de tu radio. Quédate con nosotros aquí en Latino Media. Welcome back to Boss It Up Media. We're so excited for this episode. We have some great guests with us and we can't we can't wait to share the time with them. We're already having a great time just laughing and having so much fun here at Cafe Rubio. Um, our special guest today, Marcos Crespo. Former assembly member. Yes. yes. We have Ruben Diaz Jr., former Mark Bronx Bar president and we have councilman francisco moya back with us again thank you so much for joining us thank today you, um you. we're just so excited to have you guys on we cannot express the energy that the three of these guys <laughs> share together um not only do they share the same industry and politics but they share a great friendship that um we're hoping to hear a little bit about today so thank you for joining us um yes thank you for yes. you know being here i literally they have me in tears as I'm um, wiping these tears. The tears of joy. <laughs> tears of joy. Tears of joy because they are hilarious. Um, so we're, we're definitely going to have a lot of fun during this hour with you guys. Yes. So we don't have much time. I want to. I want to get into it. Um, we've done a little bit of background on each of you, and we want to just um, see if you guys are open to sharing a little bit about your paths and what led you down the journeys that you're on. Um, Ruben, if it's okay, I'm going to start with you. Sure. First of all, let me just say thank yes. you and congratulations on this boss it up. Um, it, I think it's a great vehicle to get information out to the community. For me, uh, I'm, what Marcos always says, we're recovering politicians. Yeah, well and I, I was introduced <laughs> into politics at the tender age of seven. My, my father ran for office in 1980. And my mom was a, a retired daycare teacher. My sister's a retired police mm -hmm. sergeant. My brother is a supervisor for New York City Housing. Our parents wow. taught us always to give back and, and, and to do something in public service. Uh, and for me, because I... Um, my first two options, I thought I was going to be the shooting guard for the New York Knicks. Oh. And that didn't work out. Or, or a rap star. And that didn't work out. I, I decided to, you know, dabble in politics. I ran for uh, the, a, a political position at the age of 21, I, uh, which is the New York State uh, District Leader. So impressive. And that was so back young. in 1994. Very young. Yeah. yeah. In 1996, there was a special election for the New York State Assembly. And I was 22 at the time. I lost that race. <clears throat> One when I was, I turned 23 in the, the primary, served seven terms up in Albany. Wow. Um, and then in uh, 2009, when President Obama took the former Bronx Borough president went to the White House, there was a, an open seat for the Bronx Borough presidency. And I became um, a, the, the 13th Borough president of the Boogie Down Bronx. Wow. And I served three terms there. Congratulations. Amazing. Quite the resume. Yes. You know, when we when we did our a little background and, and we learned that, you know, you were so young when you got into this. We, tell us a little bit about your household, being that your father was in politics, how that influenced you. Was it something that you heard him speak? Did you attend his events and watch him? And then that developed your passion or were you kind of forced into it? Like, I'm your dad. This, you're going to do this. <laughs> no. What, what One of the things you won't read in my curriculum, Vita, it, it, right? It's, so I wish it was that neat. Mm -hmm. and, and it was. It was more about public service. It's something that we all saw. But my father is a, a, a minister, Reverend Ruben Diaz, and, awesome. and and he's very conservative. And the household was a conservative one. <clears throat> and on the block where we were raised, my brother and I, Sammy, we were the only guys. My block was what they call live and popping. But we were the only guys in the neighborhood with our biological father still at home. Wow. And... Um, that's a Sammy thing. and I, however, we rebelled 
And Sammy uh, became a father at the age of 16. I became a dad at the age of, um, of 19. Oh, I got, Hilda and I got pregnant when we were um, 18 years of age. I, I was working at Farberware, which is a, you know, they make pots and, and kitchen utensils. Uh, there was a factory in the Bronx. They went belly up. And then I decided to be a mess. Uh, I, uh, because of relationships that my father had, I became a messenger at the New York City Council. And that sort of piqued my interest in governance and, and governing. And even though I've been around in my whole life and helped my dad help other candidates, um, it, it, it was just something that I decided when, when there was a slate being formed uh, when I was 21 years of age, I said, you know what, uh, let me give this a try. In the neighborhood that I'm from, not too many or if any elected official or politician uh, was a voice for young people. And I, I, you know, put my my hat in the ring for, you know, as part of a whole slate and I won. And that was the start of my political career. But it wasn't like something that I was groomed for. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something, that, I, to be honest with you, that I was even cognizant about. I, and this, and I'm speaking specifically to the political arena. Yeah. Public service, yes. Being a politician, never up until that moment when I decided that, you know, let me give this a shot. You know, what else am I going to do? I'm going to be a young dad, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a, I'm a young husband, um, the community needs a young voice, and, and so let me just give it a, sh a shot. Yeah, and, and that's really how it happened. Yeah. It's not as cut and, you know, it's not as neat as some people would mm -hmm. have you believe. Yeah, <clears throat> but that developed your passion. And, and, you know, I think it was such an important statement of what you said about that you, you two were the only two that had your, you know, your biological fathers active in your life. Because, I mean, serving a community and knowing that, you know, you're, you're, you become, when you're in a political position, you, you become a, a mentor to a lot of people. And even a lot of the young people, I think each of you, you've impacted so many young lives. Sometimes um, you don't even realize, it. well, most of the time you don't even realize that you're doing it. Definitely. And, and, you know, people observe your actions and how you comport yourself, how you present yourself. And it's not only until later on, at some point, somebody will come up to you and say, look, I remember when you came to my school to speak, or yes. I remember when I saw you at a train station, or I remember when I saw you in such and such place, or I used to work, you know, close to where your office was, and I used to watch you and observe you, and you said this to me. And you don't really, you don't realize how some of the things that you can say to folks uh, make a, a, a profound and make a, a real difference in, in their lives and, and how they view things and how they operate. So true. So, so true. for me, it's like with you, um, how does politics and hip hop make an impact in your community? You know, that's a big thing. And then with that, you know, you the, the kids, you know, that watch you can say there, there's, you know, kids, all kids want to be rappers right now. But now because of your hip hop and politics, they're like, now I want to be a politician like Ruben Diaz, you know. So and then the fact that you could be part of both worlds is a beautiful thing. How does that work out for you? I think there's always been um, a synergy between the two. Um, unfortunately, so hip hop, and I consider myself of the hip hop generation. I am currently a board member of the Hip Hop Museum. Stay tuned for that. That Ooh. will be, that's coming the first quarter of 2025. But, but hip hop originally, when you look at Melly Mel and the Furious Five, when you look at, you know, uh, everything from Coogee Rap, Ill Street Blues, KRS One, The Teacher, it, it was always about, um, being journalists um, and speaking about the the woes and the injustices in our community. So true. And so for me, um, that that was able to inform me um, not only growing up as a teenager, uh, but also in how I govern. Um, and, it, and it also helped me to relate. So if you do it correctly, um, you can find hip hop to be a vehicle to waken up you know everything from 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 x clan i mean i can go on and on and on um to the fact that today more and more elected officials identify with hip-hop and more and more educators are using hip-hop as a form to pique the interest and the passion of their students so true so true yeah oh my i gosh. love that yeah it's you know it's it's just a beautiful thing when you develop a passion and you see it executed, you know, and when you can bring people together to do that, it's, it's amazing. I think this is a, a good time to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to dive into our, our good friend here, Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Dilo Duro! Dilo Duro!
Hoy no hay quien te despegue pe 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 de tu radio. Quédate con nosotros aquí en Latino Me. Welcome back to Boss It Up Media. Um, we're just having so much fun here. In this, well, we're, we're on location. We are at Cafe Rubio. Thank you for, to them for hosting us. Um, we've had some great food. We shared some wonderful drinks. Um, but we're going to get back to it now. So um, if you couldn't tell in the beginning, our friend Marcos here has quite the sense of humor. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna, to um, bring that out a little bit more. I want to ask you first, how did you get involved in politics? And then what is the funniest story that you can think of at the top of your head. <laughs> so this plenty of them, but you know, I, first of all, thank you uh, to Boston Media for having us. Thank you to Cafe Rubio for hosting us. And to Latino Mix for the professionals yes. for keeping us yes, in check. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, gotta, gotta shout them out. But look, I started, um, unlike Ruben's story where he grew up in a political household, I knew absolutely nothing about government. Um, didn't know any elected officials and my family was not very political nor engaged. Um, however, I, I studied uh, at John Jay College They didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in my life. I knew I needed an internship because my family did commercial painting for a living. I'd never been in a professional setting, understood wow. what, what that world was like. So I asked for an internship. And the only internship opportunity available to me at the time was a New York State Assembly. And so I signed up and I'm in Albany and don't know anyone there. And lucky enough to have been assigned to intern for none other than Ruby B.S. Jr. Oh, wow. Who, I you heard his story and his connection to hip hop. What he didn't tell you is that he was known as the hip hop assemblyman. Oh, wow. So I have this opportunity now to go work in Albany for an elected official. I didn't really know him at the time. I had only seen him on, on TV in the Bronx and some local work that he had done. Uh, but here's the funny part. I'll, I'll get right into it. Um, as I went to Albany and it was my first day on the job, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to tie a knot on the tie. Uh. It took me two <laughs> hours and I didn't have a cell phone. I couldn't Google uh -huh. how to tie uh -huh. a tie. So it took me about two hours that morning. I put the tie on. It looked horrible. And I go to the office and I'm super nervous. And I got the one suit I bought at H&M at the time. Mm. It was like, <laughs> and I'm sitting there super nervous, expecting to see this politician walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Except I see Ruben walk in, in Tim's and a hoodie. <laughs> and he walks into the office. And I'm already nervous. And he walks up to me and he says, you're my intern. I said, yeah. He goes, what's your name? I said, Marco. He goes, all right, why don't you take off the tie? Let's go for a walk. Oh, and I looked at him like, take off the tie. Can't put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> so my political career started with that exchange uh, and understanding. But, you know, it was, it was the best thing that could have happened because I saw someone that I could relate to, Definitely. somebody that felt like just one of my brothers or cousins hanging out with him, um, relating to him about music and culture and life and everything else, but also watching him put on a suit and yes. debate issues that I wasn't conscious of, environmental justice in the Bronx, wow. um, transportation infrastructure, um, all the racial, uh, racial uh, institutional racism that we, everybody now talks about. Mm -hmm. I remember Ruben debating those issues. And so I saw somebody that I can hang out with, have a beer, watch a game with. Mm -hmm. But I also saw somebody that inspired me to realize there's so many important issues that we all have to be a part of fighting. And so that's how I got introduced to the, to the business of politics. That's amazing. You know, that's that's exactly what we are trying to motivate people to do and to understand at Boss It Up Media here that, you know, you started as an intern and, you know, anybody can do that if you have the heart to really put in the work and start, you know, as an intern and then look at how far you've gone. I, I have old school values when it comes to working your way towards certain goals. And I believe that, you know, I, I see a lot of young people today who graduate or, or, or get involved in something and immediately they want the top spot. Yeah. And there's a value, there's a so, learning curve yeah, that all right. of us have to go through. Yes. I also believe that mentors, I don't care how successful you yes. are, I don't <clears throat> care how where you are, in the, whether you're in the starting point or you're already advanced in your work, whatever career, we all need mentors around. We yes. all need a network of friends and family and, and coworkers and colleagues that are going to inspire you, help okay. you, that you can check in with. So I have that. I've had that with Ruben since day one. I built a network of people like that along the way. I consider Francisco Moya one of one of those individuals that I constantly check in with and I run ideas by him. Usually he's my fifth call though. You know, I'm, <laughs> but, but, but I'm still I'm still considered a mentor, which which I just love on record. He just said I'm one of his mentors. Oh boy, so gonna, I, thank you, thank you, Marcos, for looking the camera right there. And I just want what's to, happening behind the scenes. I want scenes. everybody to know what he just yes, said. Yes. I am one of his mentors. So we, thank you, Marcos. I, I believe that's invaluable, and no one should ever doubt or hesitate to have people like that and check in with them. Absolutely. None of us are born knowing. We all got to learn along the way. Totally and it's so agree. important that you made yourself available to that. Like I know even for myself, you know, when I started working in a law firm, I was a legal assistant and I would 
want to learn from everybody all the time, no matter what. Tell me what to do. Tell me what. Stay past five o'clock. Don't run out the door. Make yourself available to learn and absorb from those mentors and people that can pour into you. Absolutely. Totally Absolutely. agree. And it doesn't matter what age as well. Like, for example, I, I started real estate late in the game and I'm older than a lot of these other people. And Sydney, which is part of Latino mm-hmm. Mix, became my mentor. He's younger than me. So don't ever feel like, you know, um, oh, no, he's too young to be my mentor. It's mm-hmm. Age doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter when you start your career. Just do it and keep going. That's what's important. You know? Yeah. So, but now I want to hear the funny story. Yeah. But you already well, told me. The tie. Oh, was, was it? Oh, I can go on. I have funny. plenty of. It wasn't my that life funny. is a comedy routine. Well, it wasn't that funny. funny. But that, 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 that's the problem. Laughing. Marcos always has me laughing. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. But I, I want it more. I want more. <laughs> well, no, but and my next question <laughs> is, is what is this um, dynamic duo here and how, you know. Trio. Ha- trio. Yeah, the trio. The trio. The dynamic trio. How do you guys. Yeah. Well, Ruben is disassociated himself from like the the, the yeah. thing that's gonna happen between me and Marcos right now. It, it depends on, on the dynamics, right? When we're talking Bronx politics, Ruben and I are often linked. I, I started as as part of his team and people always talk about they see him they ask for me they see me they ask for him that happens when i'm in queens or in other settings it's always me and moya you know moya and i used to send out christmas cards that were hilarious because we take these funny pictures together and and send it out and people didn't they would ask like wait a minute are you guys announcing something we're like no 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 we're just very good friends <laughs> I love but, that. but the but the connection really is um something we've been talked about we we all understand the responsibility of the opportunities the leadership roles we were given the magnitude of what impact we can create and the seriousness, we could joke all day long, but we were serious about policy and impact and economic development and, and the things that we know are moving the need in our neighborhoods. When talk, Moya, in a previous episode, I know he talked about what he brought, the vision he had for a soccer stadium. Um, I watched what, brought, what Ruben did to revamp the economy and the perception of the Bronx. And, and I likewise, you know, were passionate about issues that affected my family. I was, I was lucky enough to carry a piece of legislation that, that I took I've, only after Francisco left the assembly, the driver's license for immigrants. My father was undocumented wow. when he first came to this country. My, my mother's Puerto Rican. And so I've seen on both sides of my family the impact of how Latinos are viewed. And so carrying that bill and seeing that become uh, the law and, and, and reauthorize driver's licenses for immigrant families to me was personal. It wasn't just a politics. So we're, we we joke and we have a great dynamic, but we are, we understand that business comes first and doing the job of that the people need was, was a priority. But I also think that what, what makes this great is that we're also always uplifting each other, right? Like, you know, when, when I got to the assembly, me, first of all, me and Marcus did not like each other. Yeah, yeah, but we, we, first met, we didn't like each other. All because yeah. of him, right? So, yeah. you know, you like no, I, I didn't like you either. I didn't like you either. But you know that usually I, makes the best friends. Right. But, you know, it, it's like, right it's away. funny how life, life turns out, yeah. right? Like, you know, uh, in politics, everyone's always, you know, uh, struggling to who's going to go to higher office, who's going to go here, uh, it's a Bronx versus Queens, all of that. I, I get to the assembly and, you know, it was almost instantaneous, right? Like, like the bond that we build, you know, Marcos is uh, one of, I, I will say, one of the best orators, one of the best public speakers uh, that I have ever met in my entire life. And I, I don't think they this, heard that. Could you say I'm, that? I'm going to say it. I, I'm paying you a compliment. <laughs> right, Do you it. want me to go back and like, no, no, like just want see, you to say it again. This is what he does, Ruben, say, like, he but but he doesn't know how to receive like the compliment. <laughs> That's the problem. He's a great, he's a great public speaker, right? Marcos can get up there off the cuff and give you one of the best speeches uh, that you'll ever hear. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more scripted. I'm a little bit more cerebral, you know, and when we would get up there, cerebral, you see, yeah, it's that, yeah, it's that, yeah. so it's a backhanded compliment. So, uh, mm-hmm. to I, yourself, yeah. Mar- Marcos would sit right behind me and I would sit here and it almost became dueling banjos, right? Like we would, I, he would get frustrated. I could hear him. Like he beats like a, like a, like a horse. Like he's like, you know, and he's like getting upset and you could feel like the, the and I'm like, Marcus is like, oh, this is like, you know, yes, whatever. And he just hit the button and he'd stand up and he'd start giving this like great speech and a great debate that's going on. I'm like, he is not going to upstage me. And I'd be like, bam. I'm like, I'd get him. And I'm like, and I just want to reiterate what my colleague, Assemblyman Marcos Crespo, just said. And we would start like this and we build this great rapport that when, if he was debating a bill that was controversial, you know, and there was a lot of uh, Republicans getting up there, I would stand up. And, and, and start defending the bill or when that would happen, he would get up and, and defend the bill for me. And we built this great, uh, uh, ability to 
uh, really learn from each other, thrive from each other's like weaknesses and strengths, and push me to be uh, a better public speaker, uh, a better elected official. This is it's the holiday season, so that's why this is his Christmas gift. I'm paying him a lot of compliments <laughs> right now, you know. Uh, and, you know, we, we formed this great bond, you know, with Ruben. Uh, I, I didn't serve when Ruben was there uh, in the assembly. Uh, but, you know, during his borough presidency, Ruben became the rising star in the Latino community. Right. Like uh, he's very humble about uh, his his career. Uh, this is something that should be studied and will be studied. And it, it should be. Uh, something that for Latinos that are up and coming should should look at the history of of of, of what this man has done and what he continues to do to, to to make himself available as a mentor to young politicians. I've I've gone to see him. You know, I've asked him for advice uh, because he's someone who who sees the future, right? Uh, he's he's someone that you know could have been the mayor of the city of New York. Uh, you know, but if we talk about how Latinos don't often stick together, you know, in politics. Uh, but we don't ever get to have uh, elected officials that, you know, really come from the bottom up. And, and when I say the bottom up, it's yeah. like we worked our asses off to get to where we got to. Mm -hmm. And it was never easy. Yeah. It was never, you know, the doors were open for us or we had somebody that was guiding us that like would help. Everything was, was fought for. And I think it's what, would made all of us up here uh, better elected officials and wanted to strive to be better. And when you surround yourself with people mm -hmm. that uh, help uplift you, it, it just makes you better. Definitely. And I think that this is what I, you see in the dynamic that, that's, that's if, right in front of you. If I may for of a minute, course. thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I think that when you look at, if you want to inspire young people out there, and it, certainly those who want to get into government, I, or anything else, I would say three things. Number one is, unfortunately, we most of us have been raised with certain fallacies mm -hmm. and and um and and things that are incorrect. Number one is sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right. Words are the most powerful thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. Words can hurt me and have hurt me more than any Definitely. physical assault. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you you know we, we have to choose our words carefully and. If you do so, you can you can motivate and organize and inspire other people. Another fallacy: you have to be a leader, not a follower. Mm -hmm. Parents and elder people tell us that when they don't want us to follow somebody who's going through a negative route. But if you look at the three of us, we've all been followers. People observe how much of a follower you are, how you follow somebody, so that by the time you become a leader, I was a messenger in the city council. He was my intern. He worked in, in, in labor and he worked with other elected officials. And, and, and if you are a diligent follower, if you, if you defer to your leadership, that they will come where you will be the leader and other folks will look at how you follow. And then they would make it easier for them to follow you mm -hmm. because they knew how disciplined you were. So well said. And then the last thing is this. When you are given that opportunity, because our community is full of, uh, is abundant in talent. Mm -hmm. What's not presented all the time is opportunity. When you are given that opportunity, don't just be happy to be there. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they, they make, you know, the title doesn't make you or, or the, the economic status doesn't make you. Once you get to that position, do something with it. Be, you know, uh, um, you know, be forceful. Be, you know, um, have a purpose when you're doing it. A lot of folks just get a title or position and they just feel like, okay, I made yeah. it. If you look at what we've been able to accomplish using our words, what you know because we were given opportunities after we were good followers mm -hmm. in becoming leaders once we got to where we are we did something with it just like he's doing in transforming his entire you know uh a community with soccer stadiums and 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 housing and, and so much more and so much more that's, that's coming <laughs> um you know it's, it's not just about being happy go lucky but it's about doing something and then stretching your, your hands to you know down and bringing other people with you yeah. you know what it's you just gave such a blessing to all of our viewers. I mean, that is probably the most motivation that I think can inspire anybody that's especially looking to come into the industry to work for the public sector. You know, um, that advice is invaluable. It's transferable, by the way, because we focus a lot on politics. But in any industry, yeah. if you're in the private sector, if you're an entrepreneur, if you are working at a medical facility, I mean, you can 
inspiring. You can, and you can influence and you can make about change so many different ways. It's not limited to government. And I think that advice transfers, no matter what industry you're in, it all, these are principles that hold true in, in life, in our families, in our relationships, in our friendships and in our careers. And I think that's, you know, that's something we all need to continue to just have an open dialogue about and, and be okay with. And I think Ruben, you, you know, you laid it out really well yeah. and it's true. We should never lose sight with humility, mm-hmm. never lose sight of your humility because none of us are guaranteed we're all replaceable. And at the end of the day, what, you know, if you have that opportunity, use it well for a period of time and it's okay to then say, you know what, I've accomplished some things. We chose to step away Um, At a time when we could have stayed, you know, Moya referenced the constant competition for growth politically. We chose to walk away from that. He could have ran for mayor. I could have ran for another office. We said we did our thing. We we made our impact. There's room for new leaders, though. There's room for new leaders. And and, and that's okay. And 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 that's the other thing that sometimes uh, people want to put us all in one barrel so we could be crabs at the barrel, bring each other down. But there's more than enough to go around. So when you find this a, a, a brotherhood or a sisterhood or, or a mix of, right? And when you find like-minded folks in the same industry, why don't you have a conversation, an open conversation, a dialogue, and, uh, and and craft out and map out your lane right. so that this way you know. he He's understated. Like, he's, he wasn't just an assembly member who was my intern. Mm-hmm. You know, he became president of the Democrats in the Bronx. He became chair of the Labor uh, committee in Albany. He became leader of all the Latino legislators in Albany. Like, like Marcos has an, an an incredible resume. But that's what he wanted to do. I, you know, I never wanted to be like a chair of the Democratic Party. He didn't want to, you know, be the borough president when I was a borough president. You know, he went on to the city council. So, like, we once you map out where you want to go, then you know you're not going to trip over each other, mm-hmm. and then you can support each other and do so in a way where you're not where you don't feel threatened. Absolutely, right? Because yes. because then that's where the hate. Starts. Thoughts, yes, right. And, and 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 lastly, on the hate, let me just say this: if please don't hate on somebody if you are not willing to put in the work that they're putting into it. Preach, amen. <laughs> yes. You know, a lot of times people, a lot of times people say, "Oh, I don't like this person or that person because they where they are." It, it maybe if you were on the same path and if you put in the same work and the same energy, and that person was chosen and blessed over you, I could understand. But for the most part, haters always want to hate on somebody when they're not prepared to put in the work and the sacrifice yes. and the hours and the commitment that the person that they're hating on has put into it. So we agree. Perfectly yes. said. Oh, my goodness. And, and Marcos, <laughs> um, would you mind being a mentor of mine and teaching me how to speak? As amazing as you do, there's no. I, let, let me tell you, <laughs> like, I'm the shyest I, person you're gonna meet. No, I, no, no, no. Wait, this is what, true. This is true. What, what, this what is true. Is I, this I, is true. I, I, I'm, I'm sh- sorry. No, like, no. Let me Ruben, explain. You agree with me? Shy in what way? Shy in what way? Stop talking. Yeah. Like, what are you talking no, about? No, 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 no. But it's my nature. I'm not. I'm not outgoing like that by nature. It's just that this opportunity, this job allowed me to explore something that ended up being a struggle. Look, I, 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 trust me, I have plenty of weaknesses. Some things work for me. And public speaking and, and, and sharing was a niche that all of a sudden a different side of me came out. And similar to when artists say, once I'm on stage, yeah. it's a, it's a, you know, it's something like that, right? right? Like, lo dominicano dice se montó. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, it, when I'm in a space where I have an opportunity to speak on issues, passion drives me. Like Moya said, I'll be in, se- I was in session and somebody said something that triggered me or that I felt passionate about then i had no hesitation got up and had something to say and ruben taught me this he wants you know i never read a speech in my life don't ever read i think you have to speak from the heart and if you can't say it from the heart you probably shouldn't be saying it at all and so i was able to sort of let that passion drive me and speak up on things how you try how i share that with anybody i would simply say if it's in your heart and you have you know you put in the work to prepare yourself to to learn about the issue enough then let the heart drive you and say that what needs to be said we all need to come out of our shells share a little bit more talk a little bit more all the things ruben was saying about latinos coming together there's so many ways you can do that if you are in private business you're spending dollars how you spend your dollars is a way in which you manifest that commitment to community to to culture if you are doing a production why would you go somewhere else when you have latino mix to do yeah, that for you. Exactly. If you have real estate needs, why would you go anywhere else? But you know, and so right, here. right exactly. Yeah. So this is what this is. There's so many ways in which we can manifest all the things we're talking about, and and I think the community just needs to think about that and figure out how can you implement that in your own career. But I have to thank you, especially the three of you, because since um, 
Francisco came back into my life and I, I met you and I met Ruben. I, I'll never forget the day that we had an event from Francisco and Ru that's the day I met you, Ruben. And I was telling you guys, I don't want to get up and present or say whatever. And the both of you kind of like sat me down and you guys, it's going to be good. Just get up there. And ever since then, I've been really trying to get in front of the mic, in front of the the, the screen and, and all that stuff. But thanks to you guys, I'm getting pushed and I'm trying, and to, great. Yes, trying to do as best as I can. You have, you have a lot to say. You, yes. have, a, you have a, an incredible story. Um, that needs to be shared and, and you need to inspire particularly the Latinas that are out there. Yes, absolutely. And that's, and that's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So and thank I think, you. I think collectively what we've heard today from all three of you is really when you find what drives you and your passion and, you know, that, that'll that essentially motivate you to keep pushing, to keep not to give up. And I, I thank you so much for the sharing today and inspiring. And I know that every view, I love that this is recorded and it's going to be streamed and you can watch it over and over again. I know I personally am because I was motivated by everything that was said today. So thank you guys for coming Don't and believe, sharing. We're, we're no, we're not that. We're, we're going to oh, come okay. back. We're going to take a quick break yep. and we're going to come back because we're going to have some fun things uh -oh. going on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, uh -oh. Right, we're, ready. we're ready. We'll be back. Uh -oh. <laughs> Dilo duro. Dilo duro. Hoy no hay quien te despegue pe pe de tu radio. Quédate con nosotros aquí en Latino Media. Welcome Mir. back to Boss It Up Media, and we have these amazing gentlemen here, and we're going to have a little bit more fun, and I'm going to pass... Oh, wait, before before all of that, I just want to say a big thank you to Cafe Rubio again for having us, you know, at their location. Amazing food, great drinks. Um, it's a vibe over here, so you definitely want to get your way over here. And Latino Mix, for everything that you guys do for us, I appreciate you all. I love being here. I love having this podcast and now i'm gonna take it off to francisco for some fun well look you know thank you lisa and thank you don uh for this uh, wonderful platform to have you know the three yeah, of us here to, to share our stories with you and, and and your viewers uh and the latino mix again for what a great production you guys are putting here together thank you again for for all that uh you know one of the things that i just wanted to say you know because you, you talked a lot about this right which was uh kind of like how you started you know, looking for, 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 for mentors in all of this, uh, you know, what was the, for both of you, you know, you can all ask, like, what was the best piece of advice that someone gave you when you were coming up? Good question. Ooh, I don't know where to start with that one. There's so many different things, but you know, I, I'm a, I'm a credit Ruben with one of them. Um, he we were having a conversation one day about um, our roles and and his role as an assemblyman at the time. And there was some political fights. And he said to me, we, you know, he said, look, don't stress over it. We're all replaceable. The reason that stuck with me is it, it has allowed me to stay humble throughout everything that I've been able to do. When I was chair of the Democratic Party, one of the responsibilities that came with that was selecting the judicial nominees. I named uh, uh, close to 18 judges in the state court system. Um, and I, I had to remind myself at every step of the way, um, somebody else could be making this decision right now. What is the legacy I want to leave? And so the thought process I went into making, whether it was policy, politics, or life, I always think about those words, like, well, like, it, you know, it's not me. There's a moment in time, there's an opportunity. And, and that has allowed me to stay humble, uh, through some of the things that have happened politically. And now in, in the private sector where I'm at. Um, I try to stay humble through that. For, for me, um, one that sticks out is you can win even though you lost yeah. Yeah. or you can lose even though you won. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, so there, there's an adage that says, um, victory has many fathers yep. um, and, um, and, and failure is it's, an orphan it's, it's or, yeah. or defeat, defeat is an orphan. orphan. Yeah. Defeat is an orphan. I remember when I ran my first election for the New York State Assembly, I was 22 years old. And earlier in that day, you know, you have exit polls. My, my father was in front of a school and they took out an exit poll at three o'clock. You, know, yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah. the three o'clock exit polls. And I thought I was, I was feeling energetic. It was in the middle of winter, it was a special election. I'm on a sound truck, I come out to shake hands. My father walks me to the corner and says, go home, you lost. <laughs> so at three o'clock, about 3.30 in the afternoon, I'm in my apartment and I'm waiting for nine o'clock at night. I figured if I lost, I'm, I'm still trying to process it all. But if I lost, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to go back out to in, yeah. in terms of the headquarters. Right. It, it'll be, you know, empty. Yeah. I went out to the headquarters and there must have been over 400 people. Wow. In, in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx. And even in my defeat that night, I won. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and because of the way that I was able to 
comport myself during that campaign season. It allowed for the then Bronx Democrats to come back to me that September and, and support me. Uh, conversely, when somebody, you know, not all money is good money, and you think you're winning by making a lot of money, uh, but you can you can ruin your reputation. Yep. Um, you can ruin your community. Mm -hmm. You can ruin your name. Um, so, so even though you think that you won, depending on how you get there, you could also lose. I love that yeah. so much. That's yeah. so true. And, and like on a, on a lighter note, this last, last question to the both. So, so Ruby, you, you, everybody knows you're a big hip hop, mm -hmm. big hip hop fan. Uh, on your playlist, uh, Big Pun, Biggie Smalls. What, what do you what are you doing there? Both because I have so in hip hop you have top five. Uh -huh. So my top five is Biggie, yeah. Big Pun, Eminem, Rakim, yeah. and Karis One. Mm. Mm. I'll right. put my top five on. Yeah, I can give it. You know, I'm, I'm into lyricism. Right. Uh, Big Pun took was taken away from. Everyone knows that my favorite human, my favorite rapper yes. as a human being yes. is Fat Joe. That's yes, my brother. That's your boy. Yes. Uh, and and my business. Shout partner. out to Fat Joe. Fat, yes. Yes. Wait, what are you coming on? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he he gave us um, Big Pun, and even to this day, like I have to look at YouTube with the lyrics. Yeah. And still digest and and try to get some right. of the the, the wordplay. Uh, Biggie's a great storyteller. Karis one of the Karis one made me proud of you know being in from the Bronx. Uh, you know when he came out with the South Bronx back then, everybody had us yeah. in a negative light. And then of course the God Rakim. Right, right. Yeah, you know, I just mm -hmm. can't stand around so I get close. <laughs> close I get, get it sound my mind start to activate. Rhymes collaborate because when I heard this beat, I just had to make something from up top of my head. So I fell into the grooves of the wax and I said, "How can I move the crowd?" First of all, ain't no mistakes allowed. Here's the instructions. Put it together. It's simple, easy, but quite clever. Some of you have been trying to write rhymes for years, but weak ideas irritate my ears. Is this the best that you can make? Because if not, if you got more, I'll wait. But don't make me wait too long, because I'm going to move on. The dance floor, when they put something smooth on, so turn up the bass. It's better when it's live, because I like to move the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, where else are you? Yeah. I, Come on. Like, and that's, that's why I can never be more president because I can't do that, you know? <laughs> what that was uh, funny. That was funny. Well, I'm going to end it with, with, uh -oh. with my good friend Mark. So, you know, you, everyone's heard here, like, the story of how Marcos and Ruben have this, like, wonderful relationship. You know, also people uh, maybe don't know that no way he's going uh, with this. me and, and him, we consider each other like brothers, like like family, right? We we were roommates together in Albany for a number of years. You, are you know, we we we, we our, our families all spend you know time together. So you know, it, it, here's a question, right? Like uh -huh. like me and Ruben were hanging off the side of a of a building. <laughs> Who do I say? You have to say one person. Moya. <laughs> Let me, let me, let me. Pick, pick one right now. Yes. Say one person. No, no. Look, I'm, gonna quick, okay, I'm, gonna answer, I'm, saying, I'm not afraid to answer this one. Answer the question. It's simple. Answer even, it even God yeah. had the Holy Trinity. My friend, we're three together. No, no, no. But, but, but no, no. You have to pick one. No, 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 no. You, you can't have, have one. You have the Holy Trinity. There's three. Three. First of all, stop pretending like you're all together. We're all going to save each other. Stop pretending like you don't. We're all going to survive. You have to pick one. I got this. You have to pick one. You're all going to survive. You have to pick one. You have to pick one. Stay tuned for the next episode. Oh, oh, find out who's still alive. And Marcos is going to close it out. <laughs> that was a good, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Only because we're on this show and they're, and they're getting ready. He's filibusting right now. Right now, I'm just going to let you go. Who he's going to save, either me or you. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's easy, man. Oh, that's easy. You're winning. Right there. No I'm hesitation. There's no hesitation. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. On no. any given day of the week, oh. twice on Sunday. This was, like, this was so awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys yeah. so much for sharing yeah. this time with us, really. We had a great time. Great laughs. I mean, we yes. had not only a great show, but we had great belly laughs. Yes. And there's nothing totally. greater than that. Um, so thank you so much again for joining us at Boss It Up Media. I hope that you enjoyed this show as much as we did. Um, watch Watch it again. Take some notes. There's a lot to take away from, from this show. Um, thank you. And please make sure you follow us on Instagram at Boss It Up Media. Make sure you follow Latino Mix. They have a host of podcasts on there. Um, you can find our show there and also on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to both. Um, we thank you for joining us. Um, we hope that you stay motivated. 
keep bossing it up in your life. Um, thank you guys for coming and just inspiring everybody to keep bossing it up and making us have so much fun through that. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much. We hope to see you thank on the you. next one. Thank Take you. Care, guys. Thank you. Welcome back to Boss It Up Media. We're so excited. Um, as we explained, uh, we have some special guests today. We have with us um, the pleasure and the honor of Marcos Rubio. No. No. <laughs> I wish. I wish. No, he said that. He wrote you know, that. that. He wrote that. that. He wrote that. He wrote that. He wrote that. He wrote that in the notes. Oh, I know he did. I'm so sorry. Do it again, do it again. Marcos, Yo te rubio a veces, yo te rubio a veces. Oh my gosh. Rubio, 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 rubio. You gotta keep this in. Don't start over, don't start over. Keep that.